to be very open. I don't want to take this lecture for you boys. Because Bhagavan sir was talking here and I went outside to just go to the toilet and I found 25 of you standing and having tea, including my own brain. So we take so much pains, we travel all the way to be with you to make sure to put some goodness in your mind, in your brains, but it seems you are not interested. This is not fair. Your institution has given you the money, the time, the duty of to come here. Make full use of it. What is the point of the money? I feel very, very, very distressed by this sort of an attitude by the students that you are not interested. Anyway, I, my duty is here to take you through this. I will do it. Whether you benefit or not, I have lost that interest. This valve replacement is a, has a very long, important, and inspiring history. And if you boys are interested, I'll tell Dr. Hinema to get this book to all of you, done by Dr. Amit Banerjee. I've been preserving it for almost 4, 12, 14 years, and I read it many times. It is not possible to tell you about this, everything in this book in a few minutes, and I will not lend this book to any one of you. I will give it to Hinema, whichever way he wants, he can circulate it and give it back to me. So it has got a very long history. Now what is the function of a valve? It has got to get a very graceful movement of my forwards. And if you read about this, they start talking in the history that these persons who were doing work on valves, they were constantly they were constantly failures, fail to frustrate them, the spirit refuses to die, the enthusiasm sets to die, but the very next step as efforts continue on the This is from this book. And the last lines are also from this good book, which you can read. Now, this, what, this, what are the requirements for a valve? If Dr. Tendulkar was here, he will say it will be like the shadi.com or the matrimony.com. The bride groom and the bride will look for this quality, will look for this quality. The mother in law also match with the daughter in law. So these commandments are like that. These are the commandments which you can read and understand. They are, like, are self explanatory. This lecture will be circulated so you all can see. I want to save some time to show you the bars physically. Now, how did this beginning of bars start? This is an interesting thing. By Charles of Nagel, he first put a he the patient was having aortic incompetence. So he wanted to see how to get the blood run back to the heart to be stopped. And he designed this methyl methyl chamber containing a ball which could be implanted in the descending thoracic aorta using non-suture technique. So much of it has been copied in the recent advances now. Even that time he was thinking about sutureless technique. So he quickly came there, descending thoracic aorta, and that was the valve planted, implanted there. So which could prevent the runoff from the systemic circulation back into the aorta. It may not have helped the upper body, but it helped the lower body. But it did have a very, very important bearing on the evolution of this. In, in this particular field. What did he prove? His work proved that biocompatible materials could be successfully used to create heart valves. But his problem was placing it where it had to work. He thought that something foreign could be placed inside which will help in the circulation. But his problem was it could not place it in the right, right place. This is the ball valve which was implanted, placed there in the descending thoracic aorta, and it was extremely noisy. Tuck, 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 tuck. It was like a constant noise coming there. So, what was the search for? A biologically compatible material and a hemodynamically dynamically tolerant design, like finding a deaf husband and a blind wife. With, the, with these things going on and no pictures, please, I'll leave with the whole lecture, no point, no point getting distracted. Once directed, you should follow it. So, they started doing this, 
they are get off track completely. This the cage ball has became into being. And this physician, Albert Starr and Lord Edwards, they designed this cage ball valve using a single titanium cell cage, a sardastic ball and a sewing ring, like the valve which was shown in the x-ray yesterday, like this. I made a mistake, sorry, I was so distracted by these boys. <laughs> So as this ball valve came in picture, they, they actually got it from the soda bottle, they say. The, 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 thing, the concept of thinking started with the soda bottle. So the ball would go up when the pressure is high, deliver, and when the pressure falls, the ball will come back and make it competent. This ball valve, many people tried in different ways. We have got one of these chrome, mega, mega one, chrome valve and other valves. But nothing was very successful. This was an open cage. Plant it with such a technique. And then I want to lay stress on this sample of butter valve. This is very important. I want all of you to appreciate this. In this valve, when the ball comes down, it sits on the thing there. Is it clear to all of you? In sample of butter, what he did, which is the biggest diameter of the ball? The equator. He got the equator down to get the full flow principle. Nowadays we talk about effective orifice area, they have talked about full flow inches back. So he got the ball down into the, it, the he had double cage, one cage below if you see, one cage above. So the ball would come down, the equator will come exactly in the center. So that much more orifice has been given. So full flow, full throttle, the entire valve orifice, so much to be said about effective orifice area instead of using the word full flow. So those days itself the concept was there. So he, he the ball he made it come down. So much to his thinking that he used the entire orifice of the full flow. See, you see the valve picture. Uh, the that this ball valve was first prosthetic valve to employ the full flow orifice concept. The ball rests on the smaller inflow cage during the valve closure. This is now referred to as the effective orifice area when we talk about other valves. Yeah. Is it clear to you? Very different from this valve. But this valve had a terrible problem. It was very noisy. The man on the door, you can hear the valve here. So it went completely out of fashion. This another where the ball instead of making being made of a stylistic thing was made of uh, pyrolytic carbon. Now, how did this pyrolytic carbon come into cardiac surgery? This you all should need to know. Dr. Boro, he was working, and they found that the nuclear fuel rods. Where they were being encapsulated with pyrolytic carbon. And that is how he kept thinking whether this will be useful to us in making valves. This carbon originally used to cover the fuel rods. He found that this highly polished pyrolytic carbon it will not bond with heparin. They all were thinking of material where it could be bonded with heparin to be used inside the circulation to prevent clot formation. But he found that this will not bond with heparin and that is when he thought it was most thermo resistant non-heparinized material and he started using it for valves, it was evaluated further. Then came the era of the tilting disc valves. I didn't know this part. So we come to the uh, tilting disc valve. This tilting disc valve, the Biox Shelly convex upon the it will have a simple disc. Now, if you see this valve, if it gets implanted in the LP, half of the LP cavity goes away. And if you all have done double valve using this valve, the moment you want to do the aortic valve, 
from here half of the path is visible in the entry outflow. So people were thinking this is a high profile path, meaning too much of space it occupies. We want something less space. Everybody is going in for many disc valve. The disc valve like this, and it's a single leaflet disc valve, it will open like this and close like this. But this mechanism is not that simple. They have put in so much of effort in this. Sometimes I am amazed when I read it again and again. This disc just opens like this and closes. No, when this opens, it moves forward 2 millimeters. See this? I'll show it to you when you see that this moves forward 2 millimeters. I wish I was able to show it on the screen. The disc opens, it moves forward 2 millimeters and comes back and closes again. So this way the entire valve is washed. You get a bigger orifice, the smaller orifice is cleared completely and the valve functions without any problem. So this was the single flat disc valve and the physics behind it is very important for you to know that this opens, moves, see, and the disc also rotates on itself. So there is no stasis at a particular point, it rotates, it moves, so the, the valve becomes very, there is no particular area where there is stasis in the valve. I've already said this. So a better wash of the entire console with the forward blood flow. This was very strictly followed in the metronic hall valve. This is the metronic hall valve. The picture is there. This was done by Victor Hall and Robert Caster. They developed this valve called Hall Caster valve when they started. Later on, metronic company overtook, so it became metronic hall. Then came this era of five different valves. They said instead of having one leaflet, why would we let both the leaflets open and will give us a greater orifice area? Now, this leaflet valve, I want you to understand some more. This Dr. Bhagwan Talke from India who went to work with Delhi High. He was on these shows, he observed, and his common sense, no, which is very little these days, common sense he observed. That the passive tidal floodgates that opened with it, I'll, I'll show you a picture, you can understand better. See, when it is open in the first picture, the water flows, <laughs> and when the sea water goes up on the right side, and the sea water goes up here, it closes. So the sea water doesn't come to the land. This is the this is how the floodgates <coughs> operate. The entire Europe is protected by the floodgates. To, get, to prevent the seawater from coming inside. This was Talke's idea. He said that the seawater shouldn't come and spoil the crops. So he protected, the crops were protected on our ocean, on our sea coast by this sort of a door. And he learned from this, but let me take this into the valve. So he suggested this, that he was familiar with the passive tidal blood gates that opened with the outgoing tide and close with the incoming tide to protect the shoreline drops. So he fabricated a valve with Dr. Lady High on this particular principle with the central opening. Remember, he first designed the valve with the central opening. So the wide leaflet valve, the hinges wired the periphery and the center was open. So why the wide leaflet designed to provide a low profile valve? What happened? The disadvantage was that there was relatively stagnant blood flow in the areas of the blood used to hold the valve. Thrombus formation took place here. And so what had to be done? He had the hinges in the periphery, valve opening the center. So what did he do? Solution. The pivot sides of the sides from the equators, uh, from uh, the, the pivot sides of the leaflets were placed at the equator or at the annular ring. Instead of the periphery, he got the pivots to the center and the valve started opening onto the periphery and the problem could be overcome. Then came Robert Castle who removed the overriding stress. And finally we have the five leaflet St. Jude's medical valve. Though they say it's not a direct descendant of Calcase valve, but I personally feel that it was by his design that they got the hinges in the center and the openings on the sides. Now these three names you should know, Mr. Manny Wilfin, Zenon Sources and Dr. Nicola. 
I want to ask you, anybody knows why the same Jews, why are the spoiled same Jews? Because the saint. I'll tell you. Now they the when they moved the hinges to the center, the mechanism at the center axis of the housing was made. And then they came the concept of the butterfly recess. If you are having a same fruit valve in the exam, the examiner would like to you like to ask you about what is this the butterfly recess in the inner wall of the housing. It is the way the hinges move and gets washed with each inflow and outflow of blood. It's very important for you to read. And they got the whole valve made of pyrolytic carbon. By this name, see, because of these three persons who were working for the valve, they suggested we should call this valve Dr. Nicholas Valley. But he refused because at that time, Mr. Welfare's son was very serious and he was being treated. And they have this some belief that Dr. Uh, uh, this saint, Saint Jude's Theatres, is a patron saint, and they prayed for him for the child to be cured. And he recovered and they renamed the valve after him. And that is how the Saint Jude's valve came to be Saint Jude's Medical. This is not by the company's name, but by the saint. Who out of love and respect, they have named the valve. Then they came with the non-rotatable series which had its own difficulties and they were made into rotatable. Then they have the silver impregnated and then came finally the reject valve which has got the effective orifice area very good. Include effective orifice area, reducing the sewing ring and all these things which you can learn from the book. Now, if you see St. Jude's valve has got its own problem. If you ask the surgeon, they will say they have got this issue with valve thrombosis and all. But they all kept doing research. Then the same truth valve was not there on the road. I don't think we are happy with that. And this Onyx company, Dr. Boros and uh, Welfare, developed other two valves, Onyx and ATS. And the Onyx valve is very much in market these days. And you need to know about the Onyx valve very, very carefully. But Tonic also came up with the bi-leaflet valves on a similar design. I'll talk about the Onyx valve. It is made of a pure pyrolytic carbon. The must know things about this valve. The inflow valve has a flared orifice. And you see this, I'll show it to you. It has got a flared orifice. And on the score group, we asked you what is the function of this flared orifice? The flared inlet produces high volume of flow with increased washing to minimize flow stagnation. Whatever we do, don't want stagnation of blood around the valve because that will be starting on the clot and the valve dysfunction. And the outflow will consist of leaflet guards designed to protect the liver. You are awake now to ring the bell. Morning, you can drink. The leaflet protector, the outlet will consist of leaflet guards to protect the leaflets while they are in closed position. And the leaflets ro rotate around the tap within the inner circumference. You can rotate the valve like this. See? The whole thing is rotated. Now this closing angle and opening angle of the valve we discussed yesterday it closes to 40 degrees. <coughs> it opens to 90 degrees. Why does it close to 90? How does it close at 90? Why will it close? Will it not close? We have a discussion. I'll come to that very much very soon. And why they have kept it only 40 degrees? Why did not they make it 180 flat? This is the onyx valve which shows in the complete open and how it comes and closes. How the sizing has been done for the onyx valve? We were talking about the sizing yesterday. They have made only one valve for the micro with different size sewing rings. So all of them have the same orifice area no matter what size valve you have. The is different. <coughs> Now, the TTK Chitra valve, we need to know something about this because it has been done from here. When was it implanted? Which generation of the valve we are using? If you use this valve, they will ask you, Stanley John would ask you, what, what series is this? 6120 and 2160. We had to remember the series because before this, there were serial numbers each having one modification. So, this current valve, TTK Chitra, is the fourth generation. Go back and check what was the first generation, the second, third, what modifications have been made 
and where are we using today? And I wanted to read the box of the TTK Chitra Bhav. There's a particular name for it. What is the name? Can anybody tell me? On the box, what is written there? Go and check today. So much to be said that you love assisting in theater every day. Then see the first model had a Delrin ring. When I was appearing for my national board, Delrin came into picture somewhere. I forget. Victor Solomon asked me what is Delrin. Why did you know? So you all should go back and read that. what is Delrin. I brought a slide for that. That, that. that is how the Delrin disc was used and how they changed, how the alloys changed. And see, this is Delrin. It's a crystalline plastic which is between metal and plastics. Anyway, this is out of question. Then this is the Chitra valve, cobalt based alloy cage, and ultra high molecular weight polyethylene disc is there and a polyester suture. Is this valve rotatable? Now, one more thing word about the internal diameter, the tissue diameter, this all you will be given in the books. But this is what you have to remember when you are doing because you are constantly worried about effective orifice area. Now, if you see in the yellow, in the topmost blue, and the red, the red is the effective orifice area, meaning how much blood is flowing through the valve. This is a formula which we have already given to you on the score by Dr. Prasanna, and you can go home and find out what is the effective orifice and how much blood is going through it with the formula. Effective orifice area related to one so square meter of the patient's body surface is index orifice area. The effective, the hemodynamic assessment of the valve. When we were talking about, we were talking about primary orifice, secondary orifice, tertiary orifice on the on the score group, and people did not answer. The primary orifice is here. When is the secondary? When is the tertiary? And how did they overcome that in this? Then they you keep thinking about how they have improved the valve. They all have not answered the primary, secondary, tertiary orifice. The question of tissue valve, what is the primary, secondary orifice, you all have not answered to you today. It is still pending. Now what valve is this just to make you up? This one? What does it look here? This one? Lower valve is? The two rings are there. That is hallmark of onyx valve. And the top one is St. Jude's Bible. This one? Chitra and St. Jude's on top. This one? Chitra. This one? Tissue valve. Now, the one I, before I close, you should understand this opening of the Onyx valve for 90 degrees and St. Jude's opened to 85. When it opened slightly tilted, the fall in the pressure itself will close the valve. This is clear to you, but when it opens at 90, if the blood is going without any turbulence, it can come back without any turbulence, it can stay there constantly open. How does it close if it opens 90? Now, this is the, the entire research. Work, physics, money is spent on the pivot, on the pivot design. So everything else is the same for the valves. How does it close? This slide will show you that the, the pivot design is actuated pivot design. I want you to see the meaning of actuated. Actuated means what? And then you will get the answer that the pivot is designed in such a way that it itself will, it will initiate the valve closure and wash the pivot at the same time. And secondly, from 90 degrees to come to 40 degrees, less excursion. If it has to come to completely flat, it has to excursion 90 degrees. So from 90 degrees, it just comes to 40. Only 60 degrees, it has to work. That is why it is closer than 40 degrees. It's for closing at zero. See how little, little things are helped the valve so much. Open to 90, the activated pivots will initiate the closure, it comes up to 40. So only that much excursion is required for a faultless function of the valve. This is what we were trying to say yesterday, and you are not understanding. 
See, this is how in same juice, while the butterfly pivot is there, recess is there, so it gets washed only in one direction. Whereas the onyx one, which is on the left hand side, it gets washed in two directions. So the thrombosis or problem there is very little in these valves. Thank you for your attention and time. And this one last slide for you. So you all have to come to school to understand. You cannot just Google your way through whatever you think. You have you need someone senior to tell you certain things which will not be they'll be written in the book. You will read it, but you will never understand.